what is it? Yes, you can start. So Maybe. Professor Nicolas Boulanger give you give us talk exotic duality and higher spins. Please. Well, thank you very, very much for the invitation. It's a, an honor and a pleasure to be invited to talk to, to this workshop. I had a small anecdote. Um, my, it happens my uncle, who is now 90 years old, was working at the Belgium embassy in Moscow in 1969. And he, he told me, um, well, this I have to, to double check, that at that time, um, Andrei Sakharov at some point tried to enter to contact somebody at the uh, at the Belgium consulate, I could well he could never know for what reason, um, but that must have been very quite difficult uh, and desperate time for him to try to find some support at the Belgian embassy. So that was my little anecdote for the for that time. So now I, it is uh, real, 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 real true. Uh, is it possible? So okay, <laughs> okay. Because it, it couldn't leave. So, of course, diplomatic guards, as they were called, were, of course, outside of the door to prevent anybody from entering or exiting or, or just for controlling. Ah. Policemen were there. So Sakharov couldn't, uh, couldn't make into the, the building. But my uncle, who was working at the consulate, was informed that he um, had been trying to contact somebody there. I could never know. Well, he could never know for what reason, uh, really. So if one of you has an idea of why uh, that could happen, that I would be interested. <laughs> okay, so second slide. So this is based on the work done in collaboration with Victor Lequeux, who was at Imperial College at that time and now in his, he's at Potsdam. And in the follow-up work, of course, still with Victor, but also with my colleagues in Mons, Andrea Campoleoni and Genia Skvartsov. And to change, ah, okay. So plan of the talk, well, first introduction motivation, then I will talk about these results on the new results on double dual graviton, but published in the paper I mentioned with uh, Victor. First double dualization of a massless vector in four dimension. Massless vector gets dualized into such a mixed symmetry field. Then I will talk about the double dualization of a metric first poly field in five dimension into such a, um, window-like young tableau. Then I will talk about higher or exotic, as people call it in the P-brain um, M-theory uh, community, dualization of the 3D graviton and scalar. That will give spin three gauge field. I'll put it between brackets because that's in three dimension. And there is not really spin in 3D, except zero and one half for massless fields. Then in, more precisely, I will first discuss higher dualization of the graviton in 3D this pattern and higher dualization of the scalar. In fact, double dualization, uh, well, triple dualization of the scalar field in 3D to get such a spin three like gauge field. Motivation is that, um, well, there are several, but definitely works, the, the, the works of uh, Chris Hull around 2000 about his uh, supersymmetric 4,0 theory. And sim simultaneously, in fact, the same year, the work of Peter West on the E11 proposal. Um, sorry. <laughs> so for this work, the duality of the, um, the first dual of the graviton, so such a field, mixed young tableau gauge field with two columns and minus three, one, the second box, were shown to be related to the, to the graviton in flat space-time of dimension n. So they were shown in need to propagate the degrees of freedom of the field's poly field, whose field equations, uh, I recall, are just the trace of linearized Riemann is zero. Uh, so Hull wrote down twisted on-shell duality that relate the curvature of such a gauge field, which I give here, to the curvature of the standard field's poly field, which I recall there, via this equation. In the same work, well, series of works by, by Hull, he also discussed a field which has this structure of GLN, so two columns of height n minus three, so that in five dimensions look like this window, this is this window young tableau, and field equations that are higher traces, uh, field equations, so trace to the power n minus three, 
of these two column gauge field. So as you noticed, I use this condensed notation not to write down all set of indices. So this kind of be complex, this is precisely be complex as we discussed with Xavier Beckert long ago, um, is more compact to describe uh, mixed symmetry fields. So it's a B form, if you want, with two sets of anti-symmetric indices, each with n minus three indices. So the field equation that Chris Hull wrote is that this higher trace is zero that propagates the degree of freedom of the, of the graviton. So in 5D again, that looks like this is the second trace of the curvature. And then the twisted duality relating, relating the double dual now of the field strength of the standard graviton with this curvature field, the curvature associated with this gauge field. So the, the field equation for, for gravity, linearized gravity is that divergence of the Riemann is zero. This is mapped through this twisted unshell duality to the Bianchi identity for the curvature of that field. So now take five dimension to, to fix the ID, take the curvature of that field. It has two sets of um, th two times three anti-symmetric indices. And in turn, by using the Poincaré lemma by Dubois-Violet and Eno, for that uh, kind of fields, rectangular fields, from this Bianchi identity, identity, you can deduce that this indeed is a curvature for the young tableau gauge field that I drew above. Okay, now the field equation for Einstein, uh, linearized Einstein can also be written as the, in the standard fashion, so Ricci flat equation, and that gets mapped to this field equation for the dual field, so indeed the second trace. So field equations are mapped to field equations for the double dual. Contrary to what happens for the single dual field, where field equations are mapped to Bianchi identity and uh, vice versa. So here in the case of the double dual, it's not quite true that, uh, well, it's not true at all that field equations are mapped to Bianchi. In, it, in fact, field equations are mapped to field equations. And already at that time, Hull argued that this gauge field, do you see the cursor, by the way? Do you see my cursor? Uh, yes. Then, yeah, okay. Yeah, but Hull argued that in the presence of sources, that window-like field couples to the usual stress energy tensor, uh, confirming, confirming that that field is on shell, just another writing of Fierce Pauli. So on shell, this double dual is not quite uh, exciting. There is no extra new kind of sources, exotic sources that couple to, to them. Still, we, uh, we found it interesting. So uh, a quick proof to that, although it's not quite necessary, but for those who want. So you start from the twisted on shell duality between the window field and the fields poly, and you easily deduce that on shell, this 2,2 window-like gauge field is just related to metric tensor times fields poly plus a pure gauge term. So when the equation of motion for fields poly are satisfied, because this is an on-shell equation, it's on-shell on twisted duality, then this 2,2 window-like gauge field is conformally flat up to a gauge transformation. So that, that was shown in a paper by Marqueno, Victor Lequeu, and Amaury Leonard. So that you can invert this this relation there and express Fields polyfield as an expression in terms of the trace of the window field plus a pure gauge term. If you plug that expression for the Fields polyfield inside of Fields poly action, then, well, that gives you field equations that are equivalent to this. But obviously, the traceless part, because here you had to take the trace of the D field, then obviously the traceless part of the window-like gauge field does not enter this action. So that's not really an action for the double dual graviton. And well, we are interested and, uh, in, in the off-shell formulations. In fact, duality most of the time is absolutely trivial on-shell, even more in the like on gauge. So going off-shell and having a variational principle is a more tricky uh, story. And that interested me and my collaborator at that time, Paul Cook and Mitya Ponomaryov, who is just here online. So indeed, before this note by Mark, uh, Victor, and Amori, um, we had given an action principle already for the double dual graviton that propagates the degree of, of freedom of a single graviton, and that 
contains the traceless part of this of shell in the spectrum. So in first thing we did in this paper that I'm now going to review is to clarify the non-triviality of the action we proposed with Paul Cook and Mitya. So let's, let's go first and discuss the double dualization of a massless vector. In fact, this goes back to a paper with Per Sundell and Peter West. The idea is to, to view Maxwell field. So I start from Maxwell and then I will turn to the, to the spin two. So Maxwell viewed as a zero comma one B form. And then we do the double dualization. This field gets mapped to such a field and minus zero minus one and minus one minus two. So in four dimensions, again, to fix the ID, the Maxwell field is dualized into such a mixed young tableau gauge field. Or in three dimensions, it gets mapped to a symmetric rank two tensor. The procedure is again very simple, nothing elaborate in this, uh, in this game. Start from Maxwell, but integrating by part. Write down a parent action for this. The field P here is, um, is auxiliary. You can express it in terms of the, the field Y that is introduced in, in a parent action, this field Y. And you end up with kind of daughter action for this field with three index rank three tenths of field Y, which I repeat here for convenience. This action is in the process gauge invariance. It inherits the gauge invariances of Maxwell with a, with a scalar function, plus other gauge parameters here, this epsilon. Now you just decompose this Y field that is anti-symmetric in A and B in irreducible representation of GLN. It now setting four dimension, if you dualize, Hodge dualize this field, you get this kind of this Kurt Wright like field. That indeed transforms exactly like the Kurt Wright gauge field. And then you also have a vector field that has the usual transformation plus divergence of an anti-symmetric gauge parameter. That's 4D. If you go to 3D, the decomposition of Y, the Y field there, gives you a rank two symmetric tensor and again, a spin two, um, a, a vector field. So the spin two field has the usual linearized diffeomorphism transformation, but the Maxwell field, in fact, it's not Maxwell, the vector field has this extra piece there that mixes the gauge transformation with of the spin two field. So epsilon, the vector there, appears in the transformation law for the vector field. So let's uh, look at the, in detail at the three di dimensional case. As I mentioned, we have this spectrum. So we started from a Maxwell field. We have done this off-shell dualization, which we know that the, the action is, um, is equivalent through the, the fratkin seltin procedure. So we have an action that depends on spin two and vector, just not so complicated, of course, where this F is the field strength, if you wish, for the Z field. And I copied the gauge transformation law. Well, now we can dualize the vector field into a scalar. So we are in three dimension and do a field redefinition, perform this field redefinition to obtain an action that is fields poly plus and not minus the klein gordon action for a massless scalar plus a cross term between the scalar field and the spin two. Now, because of this wrong relative sign, the field equation give us three information, not two. One is the field equation for a spin two propagating rank two field in three dimension. Notice that there is the double trace here. That's really the Riemann curvature tensor, but we are, we are in three dimension. So it's the double trace, it's a scalar there on the left-hand side. Set it to zero, that propagates one degree of freedom. We also find the klein gordon of course, massless equation, that, that's another degree of freedom. So you might think that we have too much. We started from Maxwell in 3D and we end up with two degrees of freedom instead of one. But consequences of the field equation also tell us that the Ricci tensor for H is on shell equal to the second gradient of phi. So actually there is no doubling of degrees of freedom. They are related on shell through this equ equation, which is a twisted duality equation. Let's do the same game number in four dimension. 
we perform some field, uh, change of field variables, again, some dualization uh, procedure. And to cut uh, long story short, we end up with an action for this mixed symmetry field, Kirchwright type field, that is indeed precisely the Kirchwright action with all the gauge invariants of this action, plus and not minus Maxwell, and a cross term that mixes the, the vector field with the trace of the curvature tensor, the double trace of the curvature tensor for the Kirchwright field. So, Again, field equations give us several information that are in this box, purple box. We have here the field equation for a Maxwell field in four dimension. We have also the field equation, the correct one for a Kirchwright field, but in four dimensions. So it's, it's a bit of an abuse of terminology. In fact, it's not Kirchwright, but since it's the double tree that we get here, not a single trace of the curvature, this field equation propagates degrees of freedom. But again, there is no doubling of degree of freedom because the curvature tensor, tensors of the two fields are related on shell. And that's crucial that this plus relative sign here appears between the two, the two Lagrangians for Kirchwright and for Maxwell. So again, no doubling of degree of freedom. That's just another way of representing off shell to, to give an action principle for a Maxwell field. Okay, now, now let me show you how it works for the double dualization now for spin two. So I showed you how it works for spin one, Maxwell. And there with Victor, we, we clarified the action principle uh, found with um, Mitya, Panamarev, Paul Cook, and then Peter West, discussed with Peter West and Persondel. Now we also, with Victor, clarified uh, the double dualization in case of spin two in five dimension. The dualization procedure was given in the paper there with my, with my colleagues and friends for the double dual graviton. And it gives an action that with a Lagrangian and some of well, three structures, with this young tableau gauge field, I mentioned that this was discussed first by Chris Hull in the 2000s for on-shell description of the, the graviton. Here we give an action principle for that. And there is also a hybrid mixed symmetry field, not mixed, in fact, it's reducible gauge field there, Z. It has gauge invariances with a parameter zeta that, is, that has both a symmetric and anti-symmetric part. Then perform some change of variables, end up with an action. Uh, still, we know it propagates the degrees of freedom of a spin two, a single spin two field. It has Kirchwright Lagrangian, and here we are in the right di dimension for this field. We have a field equation, we have a Lagrangian for the window young tableau plus a, make a cross term uh, between the two. And we know that this propagates a single graviton. We can dualize this Y field uh, here in 5D at the expense of well, uh, importing a, a field F, which, are, which is a rank two, which has a symmetric and anti symmetric piece. The anti symmetric piece happens to be pure gauge. And we only keep the um, only survives the symmetric uh, part. The Lagrangian is indeed the one of fields poly. We have the standard Lagrangian introduced by Labastida and others for the window young tableau field. Here we are in five dimensions, that's what that is missing. And again, typical cross terms that is gauge invariant. So the field equations look again the same. So if you look at the first equation there, it's the correct field equation for a graviton in five dimension, five dimension, just Ritchie flat. The second equation there is also the correct field equation for a window Young diagram, diagram gauge field, D. It has the symmetries, the algebraic symmetries of the Riemann tensor, this field D. And since we are in five dimension, it's crucial that it's the trace, the second trace, double trace of the field that is set to zero. So again, these two equations would indicate that we have a doubling of degrees of freedom for the graviton. But consequence of the field equation are that the curvature of both fields are just proportional. So this field equation, this action here, they contain the two set of fields, the usual graviton and the double dual graviton, nothing more, and still propagate only the degree of freedom of a single spin two field in five dimension. Now let me go to the higher dualization pr procedure. Here we 
perform dualization, but on existing columns of the Young Tableau field. Just watching the time. And let me show you how we do the higher dualization. So the, the message is that higher dualization leads to higher spin. So let's get to the higher spin and do the higher dualization of a graviton in three dimension. Of course, it doesn't propagate anything, graviton in 3D. And again, main idea is that we have a descendant of the, of the curvature of Fields polyfield that will be set dual to the curvature of a spin three field. That, that would give rise to this twisted unshell duality between the curvature of a spin three field and a derivative of the curvature for spin two. Since we are in three dimension here, everything is topological. So to make that story variational, because again, that's quite easy to write down twisted on child uh, equation, but we, we want to have it deriving from an action principle. Well, the procedure is as follows in five steps. Start from Fields poly action, introduce a parent action here with a field D that has both a pair of anti-symmetric indices and pair of symmetric indices. And this field G just stands for the gradient of Fields poly. Then solve for the G field, it's an auxiliary field, and get an action, a daughter action, that is purely in terms of this field D with four indices. Now decompose that field we are in 3D into SO3 EREPs that will give a, a tracers rank three, tracers rank two, and two vector fields in 3D. Dualize one vector, one of the two vectors into a scalar, then perform a set of field redefinitions. And what we get is this action. It has kinetic terms for the spin three field, again, spin between bracket because we are in three dimensions here. Then it has, again, also kinetic term for spin two to field, plus some mixed term, cross terms among them. And this action has these gauge invariances. The first one are the standard France Dahl gauge invariance for a spin three. The first term of the second line is the standard linearized diffeomorphism for spin two. But the gauge parameter of one enter the gauge transformation of the other. So they are entangled. I recall that this is a topological theory because we started from gravity in three dimension. But we know from a general result of Maxim Grigoriev, Karapet, and Genia, Sportsov, that this can be put in a chain Simon's form. In fact, this is work to appear. Now, let me go to a double exotic dualization, dualization of a vector field in 3D. I just showed you how to dualize a, a, a spin two, that's topological in 3D, but now we have a non-topological system propagating. We start from a vector in 3D and do a double exotic dualization. So I go more, more quickly because it's the same kind of uh, procedure, not completely straightforward, but uh, still not complicated at all. So several steps, we start from here, all the Maxwell theory already dualized, and we write down parent action, daughter action, SO3 decomposition, filler definitions, dualization, again, filler definition, several steps. In the end, we get an action with this off-shell spectrum, spin three, spin two, spin one, and again, entangled gauge transformations. The first terms here on the three lines are the usual gauge transformations for Franz Dahl spin three, spin two, spin one. But then you have all the mixing that you can wish that appear, gauge parameter of field appear in the gauge transformation for the other fields. So it cannot be decomposed into a direct sum of actions for spin three, spin two, and spin one, spin one obviously. And let me now go to uh, get to the outlook. Genia, um, tell me if I am on time. I think I had half an hour, is it correct? Yes, I don't know, just, uh, okay. I suppose uh, uh, we give you fi uh, extra five minutes, so. Well, you don't need now to. Now you have uh, six minutes. I, fine, I will finish before, so I will okay. catch up the delay I introduced by the, my mistake with the program. So the outlook. So we, in, in the topological case in three dimension that I presented a bit before, if we pursue the exotic or higher dualizations, we produce higher in decomposable spin fields and expect an infinite spectrum of fields of all ranks from two up to infinity, right? all integer values. But we know that this procedure that it's completely systematic, which it has to be done, that's another, it's easier said than done, but 
for sure, it cannot match the well-known Blanco model. So we have a topological system in 3D. Maybe I can go back, go back to this. So this action there that displays a spin three and a spin two uh, field, I should say more correctly, rank two, symmetric rank two and rank, rank two and three fields. This cannot be a direct sum of Franzal action for spin three and spin two. Uh, although that, of course, it's still topological. So in particular, if you push the procedure that we have done and continue the dualization, you would have an infinite tower of spin fields that is a topological system and cannot uh, match with the Blanco theory. Because here we have an indecomposable structure. So here we, it seems that we have a new topological system uh, not discussed before so far as far as I, as I know. And obviously, one thing can be done is to look at asymptotic structure of this, uh, of this system. I mean, many things can be, can be done with that. Also, now in the propagating case in three dimension, pursu pursuing this higher dualization, here we expect an infinite spectrum of fields of all rank, but now starting from spin one up to infinity. OK. So, we could make that's new results then to appear with uh, Victor, Andrea Campoleoni, and Gina Sforzov. In the case of the double exo exotic of a scalar field in 3D, we have in this paper with Victor such an action for spin two and scalar field that is invariant under this gauge transformation. Notice that the scalar here transforms under the gauge parameter for, for the spin two. So what we have recently made uh, precise is that there is a direct relation between this action from the double exotic dual of a scalar field in 3D, so that propagates the degree of freedom, with the spin to triplet system that has been studied and discussed in particular in, by Dario, Francia, and Andrea in, in this paper, Maxwell like Lagrangian for higher spin. So we are uh, still investigating the possible relation between the other system we discussed for the spin three fields, for example, with the triplets. But it's not at, all, not at all obvious that there is such a direct relation that works still for spin three and, and higher spin. So it calls, it definitely calls for a classification of indecomposable representation of the, the Poincaré group in various dimensions. So the importance of making a relation with the triplet system is that this system, and as discussed by Dario in, in several of his papers and by others, is that is directly related to string field theory. And such action, of course, exists in all dimensions, not only in three dimensions. So having make, make, made a connection with the triplet is, um, to me, my collaborators here, looks promising to understand better these actions and have maybe new systems for pro propagating uh, higher spin fields in flat space time from which we can study uh, many things. Uh, obviously, one of the things we, we plan to study is the asymptotic symmetries, but there are many other things to be done. And I'm stopping here. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. So uh, questions, please. Uh, Nicola, maybe you stop sharing the uh, screen. Okay, okay. Uh, Dmitry, Dmitry, but uh, okay, please, Dmitry. Uh, so, do I understand correctly that uh, uh, once you do like exotic dualization, so whatever dualization that you do, which is not uh, with respect to the first column? It brings uh, auxiliary fields, right? That you cannot get rid of. So right, that's, that's right. So that's this analysis that we did. Uh, Mikhail remains, of course, completely true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what did you mean by decomposable representations? Did you mean like at the off shell level or? or yeah, actually? because definitely, indeed, off shell from the fact that the gauge transformations are mixed, are entangled. Obviously, the triplet system, although it is entangled in the sense that I mentioned, gives you a direct sum of, uh, of fields spin, let's say S, S minus two, S minus four, et cetera. So, so this triplet first found in the 80, 86 by mm, various people. Yeah, and at the on-shell level, it's still reducible, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah yes, totally. Mm -hmm. okay. mm, but, but here, so 
indeed off shell, we discover quite new action principles. In fact, it was foreseen by Warren Siegel, this possibility to, to do higher dualization, but never done. Um, it, it was, so this, this was found in a paper by this, this comment, private communication between Warren Siegel and Chris Hull is, is given in a paper by Chris. At his hull, but it was not done explicitly. So what is reassuring is that in the spin two case, doing this high dualization doesn't provide new action at all. We still use the building blocks which are cut right and fits poly, but by combining these Lagrangians with wrong uh, relative signs, but which are correct, of course, what we have to do, plus some uh, coupling terms, indeed produces the, field, the degrees of freedom for a single spin two field, although you have the two off-shell fields present at the same time, but not more. You don't need any more fields as you would need in the construction of, uh, of Peter, original construction of Peter West that has been used by many people for the gauge uh, supergravity systems. Mm -hmm. So spin two is still is more economical than the others. For the others, you have all these uh, series of fields. So we expect that if you want to describe, suppose you want to describe spin one, Maxwell, you can write it in a way that has an infinite spectrum of fields um, of all ranks. So that's, look, of course, in interesting. Mm. Thank you. Alex? Axel? Axel? Yes. Hi, uh, Nicola. Thanks for the Hello. talk. Hello, Axel. Uh, I have a question about the double dual graviton that you described. So in the beginning, you said that uh, Chris Hull argued that on shell, it's coupling to matter in exactly the same way as, as normal things are. You yeah. know, we have a Lagrangian formulation. If you were to do meta couplings in there, I mean, could you couple also to the double dual graviton in the in your Lagrangian? How would you do meta couplings there? Okay, coupling to matter, I don't know. Um, maybe that's indeed already discussed in these in these old papers by uh, by Chris. Um, I have to. Look okay, at I thought this was an on shell argument, and you have some action now. Right. Um, so indeed, so that's why we, we looked a bit with Victor, but we don't have a definite argument. So we don't know how to couple, couple this, okay. um, this window. So let's take 5, 5D to, to make things uh, uh, definite. No, we tried, of course, to couple a matter to this field of shell. We, we have not succeeded. So maybe if you, uh, yeah. Somebody yeah, because there's nothing obvious, like it, which, is, which, would be, which would be gauge invariant, right? So it's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, totally. So already this action is, um, is not at, at all obvious. I mean, Chris himself tried to, to have an action principle manifestly covariant. So I want to insist that all the actions that we have there are manifestly covariant with respect to background uh, isometry algebra, so point carré, don't need to split time and space. Um, and then don't display more fields than the double dual and the original field, yet they only propagate a single degree of freedom for the spin two. Right? Two degrees if you're in 4D and, and five, etc. So that's already I find remarkable. But uh, no coupling to matter, we tried and uh, no nothing to, to report. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> More questions. I would like to ask you, Nicola, uh, is it possible to extend to this consideration in some cases to Full uh, nonlinear level. Uh, uh, well, well, it, it, this is definitely a program in itself. Is to start from these um, new actions that we found, and try and introduce interactions. There are plenty of tools that have been discussed during this workshop. How to do that? Pick up the your preferred scheme, and see what happens. And and that's why I'm interested in the the relation between this dual this higher dualization procedure. That talks a lot to people like Axel and works M theory and these um, dualities um, and uh, and string and string field theory because in this way well we, we know that there are definitely interesting system interacting systems um, with string string field or M theory so it seems that there is a pattern that is preferred for uh, for theory to admit interactions so. This, this higher exotic dualization is not a completely academic problem in the sense that it seems that this is the type of formulation for a free system that is likely to admit an interesting nonlinear completion. Um, it's not really a direct sum of Franz Dahl fields. 
uh, if you think of uh, string field theory that is that is preferred for interactions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let us uh, thank uh, once once again. Thank you.